Always honored to be joined by the Pirates General Manager, Neil Huntington, our special guest here at TribLive.com. How you doing, Neil? We're doing great today, guys. Opening day, uh, uh, typical northeastern weather, uh, northern weather with the, with, with the snow in the forecast. No, it's, uh, it's going to be cold. It's going to be a beautiful day. Pirates are going to come away with a W. You going short sleeves or parka? What do you got on? Oh, you got to go short sleeves, man. Right. you, you got to be a tough northern guy. <laughs> <laughs> Good. But before we get into some nuts and bolts, Neil, opening uh, wax poetic about baseball. I mean, the Steelers open the season every year. The Penguins, uh, there's no opening day in sports that is celebrated as much as it is in baseball in Pittsburgh or anywhere. Why do you think that is? Why is opening day in baseball so much more meaning, especially in a sport where you're going to play 162 games anyway? You know, I think just the love of the game, the history of the game, the, the, the pace of the game lends itself to being a relationship game where you can sit and watch the game with your son or your daughter or your dad and, and talk during the breaks between innings. And, and um, it, it's just it's a shared love uh, from generation to generation. And, and, hey, we're losing ground to, to, to football. We've lost some ground to basketball. We've lost some ground to hockey. And as, a, as an industry, we've got to fight to get those, to get those losses back. Uh, but baseball is just such a great game. And, and opening day is so special, uh, maybe because it's played during the middle of the week, some people can you can, you can skip a day of school, uh, but, but you're right, there is no question that baseball's opening day is, is the opening day among all sports. Well, Guy was just mentioning your one-two punch at the top of the rotation, you know, A.J. Burnett and Wandy Rodriguez. From what you've seen of these guys, how close to their peak of their careers are they coming into the season? You know, what we saw from A.J. a year ago was uh, as good as A.J.'s been in a while, and, and a big part of that was, was uh, in our minds, a breath of fresh air, a change of scenery, a new league, a new ballpark, a new division, and we've got every reason in the world to believe A.J. can be uh, a very good pitcher for us again this year. Wandy has very quietly been one of the better starters in the National League, certainly one of the top 30 in, in, in baseball here. If you look statistically and you, you look at ERA and you look at walk rates and strikeout rates, and, and uh, again, over a fairly extended period of time, Wandy's been very very solid, the things we talked about when, when we acquired him. And uh, you know, behind that, you know, you've got Francisco Liriano coming back. There's a lot of indicators that were that were similar to A.J. Uh, with the reason we went and got Liriano and the reason we still feel good about it. Charlie Morton, uh, as we all remember, when Charlie's healthy, he's throwing the ball very well for us. He just, unfortunately, more 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 than not, uh, he's been injured here recently, but he's worked so hard, and, and uh, he's going to help us at some point. And in the interim, um, you know, Jonathan Sanchez, who isn't that far removed from being one of the better left-handed stars in the National League, a 200 innings guy, a 200 strikeout guy uh, in 11 was solid, not spectacular, and then obviously had the year he had a year ago, which is why we got him on a minor league contract. And and James McDonald, the guy that almost pitched himself into an All-Star game a year ago of the of the uh, 14 season months that we've had him, he's been good 11 of them, and, and it's hard to hard to remember that he's been good 11 of the 14 months that we've had him, arguably a sub four ERA for 11 of the 14 months, because we do remember August and September of a year ago, and and his over. Overall numbers in 11 were skewed by a very tough start, which you can pin on me uh, coming out of spring training in 2011, as he maybe wasn't quite ready to go with a little side strain. Uh, Pitch-wise, he was healthy, but he didn't have his spring training, and that's tough to do for, to a young starting pitcher. Neil, it's, it seems to me that you know he's the key to this rotation, at least to start the season, to some of these other guys are healthy. You, you pretty much know what you're going to get with A.J. and Wandy, as much as you can be sure about anything. The back end's a little bit more of a question, especially with Carson's uh, being injured, but what in your mind, other than an injury, I never saw quite the drop off of a guy being so dominant and, and struggling so much till he comes out of the rotation as last year. Was it a mechanical thing? Was it a mental thing? And do you, he didn't have a great spring statistically for what that's worth. Uh, do you, you know, do you, do you hope he's over it? Do you think he's over it? And, and, and what caused the drop off in your mind? You know, a little bit of everything. You, you listen to James, and in his own words, he started to take some things for granted and didn't have that same uh, inner drive that got him to the point of being so successful and started to anticipate that he was going to have success rather than working to put himself in a position to be successful. And we do feel that that's back. Um, there were certainly flashes of spring training of the guy that was very good a year ago, and there were unfortunately some flashes of the guy that wasn't very good. It's it's a, uh, it's a maturity. It's a health-wise. I mean, he battled some health issues the second half of last Last year, he's the last one that will make an excuse of it, but it did impact him. Um, there's no question about that, and, and he's healthy now. Uh, and just regaining some confidence, regaining the mechanics. He's a long, levered guy that can get out of sync at times, and, and uh, he's working hard to be able to repeat that delivery because when he does, uh, those four pitches play, and they, and they play at a high level. 
We're joined by Pirates General Manager Neil Huntington here on Trib Live Radio, Ken Laird and Guy Junker. Neil, do you uh, have any kind of a timetable for Liriano? You mentioned uh, you know similar indicators uh, to AJ from last year. I know you guys are hopeful he's going to have a real good year. Do, do we know when? Working through it. You know, he, he's thrown bullpens. Um, he's healthy. The, the broken arm is healed, and that's 100% ready to go. Uh, he's got some uh, muscle um, deficiencies in the right arm from the heavy cast that he had to wear for such a long period of time that we're working through those. We're getting him back in condition. We're making sure we take the right steps to get the left arm uh, built up and conditioned. And, and he is on the verge of returning from being a rehabbing pitcher to being a pitcher getting stretched out for spring training. And as much as we'd love to be able to cheat that process, there is no cheating it. it. It takes about a month to get a guy stretched out and ready to go, and, and, and we're looking for Francisco sometime in May. Worst case scenario, it's June. Uh, we've kind of always set that target date, and, and he's on target for that. Is it late May? Is it mid May? Is it early May? Uh, you know, time will tell as he progresses and if we have no hiccups along the way. Uh, fans were, uh, you know, a bit upset about Garrett Cole being sent down when he was. Can you tell us the progress that you think he's made from a year ago and, and um, the, the thought process in, in him not being part of this roster, especially when some of the, these other problems popped up, Neil? Well, in Garrett Cole's case, it's a guy that we could not be more excited about his future. And um, uh, But at the same time, we've got some work left to do with Garrett. Uh, he showed signs of improved command of his fastball, but not to the point where he's he's uh, ready to come up and be one of those guys that gives you a legitimate shot to win every time he takes the base, baseball. The consistency of the breaking balls, uh, because they're both can be wipeout, but the consistency of them, the consistency of the changeup, the use, the ability to use all four pitches, the ability to pitch with his fastball, at very various points in spring training, he showed signs that he's taken steps forward. Uh, again, it's much like every other young player. If we look in our recent history, just in the five years that we've been here, if you look at the players that have hit the ground running, it's Andrew McCutcheon. Andrew had about a year and a half of AAA baseball. Garrett Cole doesn't even have a year of professional baseball. You know, I take it back. He's got one year of professional baseball. Andrew McCutcheon had a year and a half of AAA baseball. Neil Walker, I believe, had two plus years of AAA baseball. Neil hit the ground running at the major league level, arguably in the most difficult of situations as he was in the midst of a, of a 21 day posi- 21 day old position change the Pedro Alvarez who had a year and, and three months of, of professional baseball hit the ground sputtered took off and then sputtered for an entire season the next year Jose Tabata coming off a little bit under a year of AAA baseball hit the ground and sputtered Brad Lincoln a um, little under a year of AAA baseball hit the ground and sputtered and then came you know came together a couple years later so uh, our own history shows us that we need to be a little bit more patient with guys. The bigger history of baseball, There's, we did a quick study in the last 10 years of guys who've, who've had less than 200 innings of professional baseball under their belt, and they come to the big leagues, and there are some guys 1-1 one, one in the country, you know, selected first overall in the country, selected fourth overall, fifth overall, seventh overall, so it's not just second rounders that got to the big leagues in a hurry, or 18th rounders that got to the big leagues in a hurry. It's about a 50% hit rate, and I don't think anybody in, in Pittsburgh wants us to take a coin and flip it on Garrett Cole and say, well, you know, he's got a chance. He's got a 50% chance to be successful. Let's get into the big leagues now because we all want to see him. Trust me, we'd love to see him, and, and when Garrett is ready to go, we'll get him up here. But right now, we still got a checklist that we need to tick some things off, much like we did with Andrew, uh, much like we did with Walk, and, and uh, when we feel Garrett's ready to come up here and, and not only survive, but ready to help a team win on a consistent basis, uh, we'll get Garrett here. But he's working through some things, and, and uh, um, you know, again, it's, it's also easy to forget that, that a AAA team put a hurting on him a year ago. Um, and it's second AAA start. He was okay in his first and his second AAA start. Uh, they actually waxed him, and, and he tried to throw harder and tried to throw harder, and, and he learned pretty quickly that AAA hitters can hit 100, and he's got to have some other things to go with. And he's making great progress, and we still believe he's going to be a fantastic uh, top-of-the-rotation type major league starting pitcher, but we've got some work to do yet.